Good afternoon, I'm Megan Sippy, MIS and Flexible Endoscopy Fellow at University Hospitals. I'd like to thank SAGES for the opportunity uh, to present this afternoon, and these are our disclosures. Operating room time is a significant cost and source of income for hospitals. Inefficient utilization can lead to late in the day starts or the inability to add on semi-urgent cases. OR efficiency is not just room turnover, yet many OR managers focus on first case on start times and turnover times to improve efficiency. Entering the room to OR, uh, entering the OR to time of skin incision and skin closure to exiting the room account for a significant amount of OR utilization. The aim of this study was to evaluate the efficiency of these points of patient care. The PIXIS Clinical Solutions Database at our single large academic hospital was used for this study. This database prospectively collects patient data throughout the perioperative care experience, including preoperative data, data from anesthesia software, and through the post-anesthesia care unit. A retrospective review of this prospectively collected data was performed as part of a process improvement initiative. All procedures performed in the OR between January 1, 2015 and October 31, 2015 were analyzed. Data points examined included individual surgeons' mean time from room entry to skin incision, skin incision to skin closure, and skin closure to exiting the OR, as well as surgical specialty to allow for subgroup analysis. Lastly, we observed the surgical team with the highest efficiency to identify best practices contributing to that efficiency. Data from 11,497 cases were analyzed across all surgical subspecialties. Average time from entering the room to incision was 36.6 minutes. Subgroup analysis of general surgeons was performed. This included 4,591 cases among 24 surgeons. All surgeons performed at least 10 cases monthly. All cases were performed with resident involvement. Average time from entering the room to incision was 38 minutes, which accounted for 20% of the patient's OR time. There was great variability among surgeons with individual averages ranging from 11 to 51 minutes. Skin closure to exiting the room averaged 14 minutes, which was 7% of the total OR time. Despite our prediction that subspecialties may differ in their room entry to incision time due to factors such as more frequent use of lithotomy or prone positioning, use of epidurals or arterial lines, etc., the data did not support this. In fact, there was no statistically significant difference between general surgeons and other surgical subspecialists regarding time from room entry to skin incision. But as I mentioned, what we did find was that great variability exists among the individual surgeons within each subspecialty when looking at all procedures performed. This is just a graph of general surgeons organized alphabetically showing the wide range um, in, of time from room entry to making that skin incision, ranging from 11 minutes to 51 minutes. Again, the mean time was 38 minutes with a single standard deviation of nine minutes. And these wide variations among individual surgeons also existed within the other subspecialties. And this just shows those wide variations among the individual surgeons. In observing the surgical team with the highest efficiency, we found that these steps allowed for that 11 minute in room to incision time. And you'll notice that it starts with the surgeon. The surgeon is always present in the room from the time the patient rolls in until the patient is rolled out. This assured that there were no delays in performing a surgical timeout. Any questions about equipment positioning, patient positioning, placement of a Foley catheter or OG tube, etc., could be addressed without delay. Teamwork with anesthesia was essential so that prepping and draping occurred during induction. Video equipment was confirmed to be functional prior to intubation for laparoscopic cases. Incision was performed at the time of intubation. No muscle relaxants were given after intubation. An extensive use of local anesthetic, including tap blocks where appropriate, uh, were utilized so that the patient could then be extubated during skin closure. If the patient was slow to extubate, he or she is transferred to the gurney while intubated. 
This allowed the OR staff to start breaking down the room prior to the patient exiting the OR, which in turn shortened turnover time. Lastly, the attending surgeon only left the room when the patient leaves. This assures the OR team that there will be no unexpected problems with residents finishing the case. It's understood that not all of these measures are applicable or appropriate to all cases, and it's unknown to what degree each individual measure contributes to the overall efficiency. In a way, you can think of it uh, similar to an ERAS protocol in that nobody knows if each individual measure works or to what degree, and each component may not be performed in 100% of the cases, but we do know that as a package, it's effective. And similarly, this is what works for this team in regards to room efficiency. So what this study shows is that there's certainly room for improvement in OR efficiency as evidenced by that wide variability in time from room entry to skin incision among surgeons. The surgeon's presence and direction of the team matters. And while these suggested practices can easily be replicated, it absolutely takes teamwork. And collaborating with the OR staff and anesthesia is essential. In conclusion, OR efficiency is not just room turnover. The surgeon plays a significant role, and therefore significant variability exists among surgeons. Development of a standard management that includes nursing and anesthesia collaborations can improve operating room efficiency and in turn lead to greater utilization of the OR. Thank you.